Hi there, this is Jesse with OEM Auto Parts Co. Today I'll be going over what's included in the GM Denso Hard Drive Navigation Unit Conversion Harness. We first have the main connector. These two plugs will go in the back of the radio. These three over here will go into existing factory harness wires. If you're using an aftermarket rear camera, you'll need to plug it into this. And also you may need to run your vehicle speed sensor wire. This connector here is for rear entertainment. If your vehicle is not equipped with rear entertainment, you do not need to install this. This end plugs into the radio. This end will plug into the factory existing harness. This is the FM antenna adapter. This end will plug into the factory FM antenna. This end will plug into the new navigation system. This is the USB cable. This end will plug in behind the radio. This end will plug in underneath the center console if your vehicle is already equipped with USB. If your vehicle is not equipped with USB, you can leave this end inside the glove box. This is the XM antenna extension cable. This end will be plugged in behind the glove box and this end will be plugged in to your upgraded navigation system. Those are all the parts that are included in the GM Denso Hard Drive Navigation Unit Upgrade Conversion Harness. The tools required for installation will be some plastic panel removal tools. You could also use plastic putty knives or a wide flathead screwdriver. You're going to need some kind of pliers. Household pliers will work fine. You're going to need wire cutters or side cutters to cut a zip tie and a 7mm socket. You could use that on a ratchet or some kind of driver. In the next step I'll be showing you how to remove the radio. Now we will be removing the factory radio from a 2011 GMC Yukon with the Bose sound system. You want to start by prying off on the top of the bezel, working your way down along the side of the radio. There will be four clips along each side and one clip on the bottom. With the 7mm socket you will want to remove the eight bolts, four on each side of the radio. You want to start with the two bottom ones and remove the accessory tray. The next two up remove the AC climate unit and then the four to remove the radio. Now that we have all the bolts out, we're going to remove the accessory tray, remove the AC climate control and remove the radio. Now we will be removing the connections from the back of the radio. You'll start by the antenna connection, pulling the black shroud around it, and it will pop out. The USB connection, on 2010 vehicles and up, most of them have them. You want to start by putting your panel key on the little metal tab and pulling it right out. The two other connections are just a little clip on top and they slide right out. For 07 to 2011 vehicles, you will need to remove these two plastic plates. To do so, you'll need to unscrew the three screws and either using a Dremel, a Sonar tool, or a hacksaw blade, cut up on both sides and remove these plastic pieces. You'll want to be sure to double and triple check that there are no wires that you'll be cutting when you're cutting the plastic pieces. You will now need to locate your main harness and locate the green wire. This is the vehicle speed sensor wire. This will need to be ran through the dash down behind the gas and brake pedal, being sure not to interfere with them and then connect to a location which I'll show you in a minute. Now that you have ran your wire in such a way that it will not interfere with the functionality of the gas and brake pedal, it's time to remove this distribution panel. It pulls right off. There's one clip holding it right there. There's a clip on the top right and top left of this distribution panel that you will want to press while pulling down, then slide it out of the two retention slots. You will want to pull the distribution panel out and flip it over. Locate the orange and green connectors and remove them. You will want to cut a zip tie that will be around this bunch of wires. I've already done so. You will want to locate the green wire with a white stripe. Then you will proceed to put a T-tap connector on this wire, which I will show you how to do. Now you will want to attach the T-tap to this green and white striped wire. You will do so by putting the wire in a metal slot, 
holding it with one hand and applying pressure with the pliers until you hear a click. Then you will take your green wire from your VSS harness that you've routed and make sure it is properly inserted into the T-tap. Once this connection is made, you're able to tuck the green wire away, reattach the orange and green connectors, slide your distribution panel into the retention slots, click it back in place, and reinstall your cover. Now we will be installing the GPS antenna. You're going to need to remove the front dash plate to do so. In some vehicles, the A-pillar will have to be removed, as in this case. You want to start by removing the 7mm screw cover and removing the 7mm screw. You want to pull back the weather stripping along the A-pillar and slightly pull out then up on the A-pillar to remove it. Some models have a tweeter. You'll want to disconnect this wire. Now you will want to remove the dash plate. To do so, you'll want to start from the driver's side, working your way over to the passenger side. You'll want to insert your panel tool underneath the dash plate, by the clips, and push up. Then grab your GPS antenna plate. Lift up the dash plate and you'll see the location where the GPS antenna is inserted. It sits in there and one clip retains it. You'll want to route your GPS wires around the defroster vents down to behind the radio. When routing the GPS antenna wire, you'll want to be sure to come through the lower opening of the radio bay. If you run the wire anywhere else, you risk pinching it and damaging it. Once you have finished running the wires for your GPS antenna, you'll want to be sure, once again, to make sure it's not interfering with the defroster and reattach the dash plate. Once your dash plate is secure, you'll want to reinstall the A-pillar. If your A-pillar has a tweeter, you will want to reconnect this now. Once your tweeter is connected, you'll want to make sure the lower tabs on the A-pillar line up with the dash. Push down and then over to lock your A-pillar into place. You'll want to reinsert your 7mm screw replace your screw cover reinstall your weather stripping and your GPS antenna is installed. Most vehicles already have the USB cable installed. If not, you will need to run this cable. This end goes behind the radio and this end goes into either the glove box or into the center console. I'll be running it into the glove box. This is an XM antenna extension wire. Currently, the XM tuner is located behind the glove box. When you're upgrading to a unit with a hard drive, the XM tuner is located inside the radio. You will need to be sure to call and change your subscription from the tuner inside your car to the tuner inside the radio if you wish to keep your Sirius XM. If you don't want to keep the XM radio, you don't even need to run this cable. To install the USB cable and the Sirius satellite extension cable, you need to open your glove box and drop it down. To do so, there's a little plastic tab you must press up. The glove box will drop right down. This yellow connector right here will need to be removed. Once you have this cable removed, you can take your XM antenna extension cable and plug it in there, then route this to behind the radio. You can also take your USB cable, if you wish to install it in the glove box, and route this behind the radio. This is the antenna adapter. You'll need to plug this end into the factory antenna harness. You can go ahead and tuck this away. You'll want to locate the three female ends of the main harness. You want to take your 
factory harness with the power and plug that in. The speaker outputs and plug that in. Some vehicles have a wire that plugs into the VSS harness. And then also, if you have rear entertainment, you'll be using this connector. This will plug into the rear entertainment connector. This particular vehicle does not have rear entertainment, so we will not be using this. There's a female RCA cable coming off of this connector for the vehicle speed sensor and the reverse camera. If you're using an aftermarket reverse camera, you will plug it into this connector. You'll also want to be sure to electrical tape it so it doesn't work its way loose. You can now tuck the extra wires into the dash a little bit. It'll make installation of the radio easier. You will now need to plug in all the connections behind the radio. This particular vehicle does not have rear entertainment, so we will not be using this plug. If your vehicle does have rear entertainment, this plug will be going here. You will need to plug in the XM Sirius radio tuner, the AM FM antenna, the USB, the VSS plug, this also has your rear camera input, your GPS antenna, and then finally the big connector. This has all your power and speakers in it. Once you have all those plugged in, you can tuck the wires behind the dash. and reinstall the radio. Once you have your navigation unit installed, you want to verify that everything's functioning correctly. You need to insert the key and turn the vehicle on. The unit will take a second to power up. As you can see on the screen, there's a slash through GPS icon. This indicates that the GPS system is not yet synced with the GPS satellites. This may take a few minutes to a few hours. If it's cloudy out, you're under heavy trees or in a garage, it may not sync immediately. You will notice that the GPS slash through icon is no longer on the screen. This indicates that the GPS system is now synced with the GPS satellites. You can now enjoy using your new navigation unit.